ಗಣಯುಕ್ತ ಗಣೇಶ್ವರ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಜ ನಯುತ ಗಣೇಶ್ವರ ಭಜಿ ಸತತ ಸುರೇಶ್ವರ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಜ ನಯುತ ಗಣೇಶ್ವರ ಭಜಿ ಸತತ ಸುರೇಶ್ವರ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಜ ನಯುತ ಗಣೇಶ್ವರ ಅಜೇಂದ್ರ ಪೂಜಿತ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರ ಅಜೇಂದ್ರ ಪೂಜಿತ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರ ಅಜೇಂದ್ರ ಪೂಜಿತ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರ ಗಣಾಧಿ ಸತತ ಸುರೇಶ್ವರ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಜ ನಯುತ ಗಣೇಶ್ವರ ಅಜೇಂದ್ರ ಪೂಜಿತ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರ ಗಣಾಧಿ ಸನ್ನುತ ಪಾದ ಪದ್ಮಕರ ಕುಂಜರ ಭಂಜನ ಚತುರ ತರಕರ ಗುರು ಗುಹಾಕ್ರಜ ಪ್ರಣವಾಕಾರ ಕುಂಜರ ಭಂಜನ ಚತುರ ತರಕರ ಗುರು ಗುಹಾಕ್ರಜ ಪ್ರಣವಾಕಾರ ಗಜಾನಯುತ ಗಣೇಶ್ವರ ಭಜಿ ಸತತ ಸುರೇಶ್ವರ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಜ ನಯುತ ಗಣೇಶ್ವರ ವಿಶ್ವಜನನಿ ವಾಸವೀಮ ಹೃದಯ ಗೀತಿ ಅಂಡುಕೋ ವಿಶ್ವಜನನಿ ವಾಸವೀಮಾ ಹೃದಯ ಗೀತಿ ಅಂದುಕೋ ನಿತ್ಯ ಪೂಜಾ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಿಂಧು ಆತ್ಮಹಾರತಿ ಅಂದುಕೋ ವಿಶ್ವಜನನಿ ವಾಸವೀಮಾ ಹೃದಯ ಗೀತಿ ಅಂದುಕೋ ಕಲಂ ಪಾರಕ ಕಲಂ ಸಾಗ ಸೇವೀನಿಯ ಮೃಗ ಕಲಂ ಪಾರಕ ಕಲಂ ಸಾಗ ಸೇವೀನಿಯ ಮೃಗ ವಿಶ್ವಜನನಿ ವಾಸವೀಮ ಹೃದಯ ಗೀತಿ ಅಂದುಕೋ ಸೌಹಾರ್ದ ಆರ್ತತ ನಿಂಡಗ ಸ್ನೇಹ ದೀಪಂ ಬೆಳುಗ ಸೌಹಾರ್ದ ಆರ್ತತ ನಿಂಡಗ ಸ್ನೇಹ ದೀಪಂ ಬೆಳುಗ ಸಹಾರ ಬಂಧ ಪ್ರಗತಿ ಪುಷ್ಪಂ ವಿರಿಯಗ ಭಕ್ತಿ ತೋ ನಿನು ಕೊಲು ತುಮು ವಿಶ್ವ ಶಾಂತಿ ಕಿ ನಿಲು ತುಮು ವಿಶ್ವ ಜನನಿ ವಾಸವೀಮಾ ಹೃದಯ ಗೀತಿ ಅಂದುಕೋ ಅಂದುಕೋ ಮಾ ವಾಸವಿ ಹೃದಯ ಗೀತಿ ಅಂದುಕೋ ವಿಶ್ವ ಜನನಿ ವಾಸವೀಮಾ ಹೃದಯ ಗೀತಿ ಅಂದುಕೋ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಮೆಲೋಡಿಯಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಮೆಲೋಡಿಯಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೊ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ secretary girl to talk about nrv good evening and ash 
Ashok, can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can hear. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this wonderful session. And uh, I appreciate all the participants who has been into this call. And uh, our president is not in, in uh, America. He's in India on social activity. And uh, it's very wonderful that our president been to India Today is the third day and uh, you already launched two library projects. So it was a very wonderful and kind gesture from our president. He already on the mission. So as our special thanks to Srinivas Pandi Rao Garu and uh, all the leadership. And uh, I requested Ashok Garu to come up with a wonderful session. And uh, this session, it's a very overwhelming response. I see it, more than 125 people already on the call. So that means that a lot of people are very happy, excited to learn more about their health, fitness situations and tips. So I request this committee to go forward and do a lot more wonders as we go forward. And uh, one other thing I request is everybody start growing vegetables on your backyard and sharing, share with your local chapters and uh, cultivate this culture that way this will increase the love bond integrity and the transformation of knowledge between the families by sharing this so i once again appreciate all of you being in the call and our thanks to president elect our ramesh Papanapaligaru from boston he is also on the call and also our both secretaries, joint secretaries, Panisha Garu, as well as uh, Kishor Kundur Garu. And uh, yeah, thanks, Ashok. Please go to the next. Oh, thanks, Praveen Garu, for kind, kind words. So next, Ramesh Bapun Garu, say a few words about NRIV. Thank you, uh, Ashok Garu. Um, first, I wanted to um, say thank you to Padma Garu. Uh, with a um, beautiful prayer, we have started this evening our webinar. Um, it's a, a very, uh, very beautiful song. Thank you. Ganesha song as well as uh, Vasurimata song. Thank you. And we have um, um, uh, several leaders on, in, in this team. Um, I wanted to say thank you to our General Secretary Garu, uh, Premin Tadakamalagaru. We I see both the joint secretaries joined um, Panisha Garu as well as Kishor uh, Kondur Garu. Uh, thank you, Andy. I see some devotees joined uh, the team uh, on the on the um, call as well. I see Srinivas Chitmalagaru and Suresh Badam Garu, and maybe few other people might have joined. All devotees, uh, thank you for joining. I see few RDs joined the call as well. Uh, Ramesh Amartulur Garu and Jal Jawarda Garu. I saw. And um, um, maybe there are a few other leaders. Um, welcome to all the leadership as well as all the participants and um, 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 one of the things um, uh, Premin Tadakamallo Nagaru already shared is our uh, president uh, Srinivasarao Pandrigaru traveling in India. And he's um, day one, the moment he joined, um, uh, landed, he directly went to one of the um, um, NRIVA activities, and he launched a, a library in uh, um, PA Pali in Nalgonda district. And after that, he's on the road uh, promoting NRIVA and uh, NRIVA activities. Uh, a thank you, Srinivas Rapandri Garu, our president. And he's going to Badra Chalam after, the, um, uh, after this, and also he will be working with um, our NRIVA foundation team. There are several activities. Uh, in his uh, uh, agenda, he will be he will be working on that. So, not taking um, uh, more time, I wanted to give the um, webinar itself is uh, most of the time. That being said, I wanted to recognize um, um, our um, um, presenters here. Uh, we have, with a very short notice, uh, thank you, Krishnaveni Vampatigaru, for putting together um, the webinar in a, a very short notice. And uh, we had a kickoff call with uh, um, Health and um, um, uh, Happiness Committee uh, not so long ago. And during that, um, you were sharing uh, about our Boston Garden group and our team. 
this is very true. We, um, uh, we have a lot of expertise in Boston and um, our Boston community has more than 110 people uh, in um, Boston Garden Group. Um, every year they, they, they communicate a lot within, within the team, uh, share ideas and help each other. They even share um, the seeds, plants, um, and the team is going to talk a lot. I, I, I don't want to um, steal the thunder here. And I wanted to thank you, um, Madhavi um, Somagaru and Sama, and uh, Shobha Donti Garu and uh, Prashant Danda Garu uh, coming forward to <coughs> uh, give this um, presentation in the, with a very, very short notice. Of course, you guys are very experts. You don't need a, a notice at all. You can, you can just wake up and talk about it. I'm pretty sure you guys are experts. And uh, there are two things um, this um, uh, committee was talking during the kickoff meeting, what we eat, that is one side of the equation, and what we do as an activity to keep up our health is the other side of the equation. And bringing them together is an excellent thing. And that is what we are doing with the Health and Happiness Committee this term. I don't think we have we have done a lot about lot about collaboration on a nutrition side and what we eat, organic food, and um, 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 uh, farming in the backyard of, of your vegetables. That is what this whole talk about. This is fantastic thing. And in the beginning of the term itself, we started talking about it. I am pretty positive uh, nationwide, all the chapters, I, I, I am hoping we, we are going to do wonders in terms of gardening and what we can grow in our backyard and healthy, healthy li um, living and uh, healthy eating. And um, I'm really looking forward for, for the session myself. Uh, thank you so much, Ashok Garu, back to you. Thanks, Ramesh Garu. So now, thanks for your kind words and help telling about our all the speakers and all that stuff. So now let's to not delay the stuff. We'll start begin with our uh, session first. Uh, we'll talk about a couple of things about our health committee stuff. Then we'll start the webinar. So let me share my start my slideshow first. Yeah, hold on. So can all see my screen, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So this is our Health, Happiness and Fitness Committee. Today's speakers, first is Madhavi Samagaru, first to go with that. Then next will speaker will be Shobha Gayatri Donti and next is the Prashant uh, Danda. So these are the speakers for today's session. So to start with Madhavi Samagaru, we live in Sharon, Massachusetts with her husband, Ramesh Amartulgaru, who is the regional director with two kids. She is a software engineer and she started her passion since 2013, since the, uh, 10 years almost. So that is the thing. So next slide. So next one is, this is our webinar about the organic gardening. So this is already, I spoke about our committee and chair and coaches and members. So this is all our committee members. So the so I do I wonder Divakar are missing that one once I had. So, so then this is before we start, we want to have health tips and save the environment. So we want to use the bring your own bottle so that rather than using the plastic bottle to avoid, try to avoid plastic bottles, even in the parties, try to provide water stations or recycle the bottles to the possible things. So we wanted to, and try to use multigrain breads or multigrain flour instead of wheat flour, add salads in our daily meals, light dinner with soups or salads, steamed lentils, Pranayama for your meditation to reduce your stress. 
intermittent fasting, which we know Ekadashi is Indian old tradition, why they used to follow, right? One time, if you give, there's a lot of research, also Nobel Prize winner, also 16-hour 16, 16 fasting, which gives you all the regenerate the cells, dead cells also. That's what it is they talked about. Now they came with intermittent fasting word, but Ekadashi is already there long back. They used to, some people whole day, they used to fast. Like my mother, brother used to fast entire day, no eating, only he eats on Dwadashi next day morning. So that's how they eat. So 36 hour non-stop fasting. So then reduce intake of sweets. As you know, right, body, when you take sweets, which converts into fat, fat can never be burnt unless you burn the calories, okay? That is only burning the calories. What you take, if you take excess of food, how can you burn, like, I'm not going down, I'm not reducing my body fat, it won't work. You have to burn three times to work that one. So that's why fat, sweets are not good. Reduce as much as you can, sugary drinks, all those stuff. These are just healthy. Everybody knowing, I know that. We just want to follow that, then we can be helpful for the stuff. So, And next is our goal is to bring in walkathon is the next challenge we are planning to bring. 10K, walk, 10K per steps from April 2nd to uh, Ju July 2nd. So, which we started, Wakatan Balagaru was there, started from the BNRA, it's in NRA, we started like a couple years back. So, now we're continuing that and we're introducing another one is 15K steps daily, that is 1.5 million 90 days, 10K means 1 million, you can choose whatever challenge you prefer. So, we wanted to work towards that goal. So, there are types, brisk walking is the one which gives you good, this one, so not the... Then slowly we're going to launch 5K, 10K marathon and mindful meditation, uh, Zumba, yoga classes based on we going to get the survey soon. Once we get the survey, finalize what sessions to bring in all that stuff, we're going to plan that one. And also there will be raffle also in the uh, 5K, 10K also, uh, the 10, 10K and 15K. So to begin with, let's start with Madhvi Samagaru, the first session. So Madhvi Garu, it's yours now. Um, thank you, Divakar Garu. Sorry, thank you, Ashok Garu. Uh, my name is Madhvi Sama and uh, I live in Sharon. So good evening, everyone. So Massachusetts since 2003. And uh, first, thank you, Health Happiness, Health happiness committee for giving me this opportunity to share my garden experience. Uh, I have been doing this gardening like from almost 10 years, like from 2013 to two, since 2013. Um, so like in what I like in the gardening usually is like it gives a lot of peacefulness and also it's a great stress reliever. And also it's a very good family activity. So everyone in the family include like involves in my family, like my husband, my kids, kids also so much enthusiastic in that. And it's like a feel good activity. And finally, when I see the harvest, the produce, I feel so happy and I'm in the sky. So let's start the presentation. Like, can you go to the next slide, Diva Karigaru? Yeah, hold on, sorry, I put the sound. Hold on, let me close the session. Yeah. This one. Yes. Yeah, so in my presentation today, I'm going to talk about my experience about the organic uh, gardening, like how I've started and what is the problems that I faced. The, all are like self-learning and also by seeing the YouTube videos and talking to the friends. And also, uh, as Ramesh Varu said, we have the great NRAVA garden group in the Boston. So we had like, we shared so many ideas in the group, which are very helpful in my gardening journey. So what I'm going to talk about now is like how to choose the best location for the garden and also what kind of soil to use and how to start like from seed seeding to the plants and what kinds of veggies to grow and also put uh, about the fertilizers. And at the end, I 
at the end i will show like some of my vegetables like produce that i got in the past few years uh yeah can i can you go to the next one so uh first once i have an idea about like two once i decided to start the gardening so the first difficulty for me was to make a decision is uh, to choosing the place best place to put the garden vegetable bed because uh, it's like very important like i need to choose the place where i can get the sunlight for at least six to eight hours because the vegetables that i'm going to grow they need like sunlight uh, so what I did was like I observed a few days like to decide the final spot like how sun was passing. Uh, so that gave me the best idea like how to where I can uh, set up my vegetable bed. So usually like south or southwest is the best place. That was my experience. So is he picture? This is the garden that we started like in two thousand thirteen. Uh, so after that, we expanded more also, but I don't have that picture. So my husband set up this uh, vegetable bed so we can get like all these uh, uh, equipment in the home depot or local nurseries. And also one thing is like uh, we can, it needs to be set up like close to the source of water. So it's easy to water the plants and also convenient access like we can access the tools, everything like conveniently to use the garden. Uh, I have one more thing. Uh, suppose if you don't have like proper place with sunlight, uh, we can choose either the container gardening or also the commu community-based garden, the like community-based. Because in most of the towns nowadays, uh, they offer the community lot like the garden lots for very nominal price even I tried once like two years ago that one it was very good uh, so they give everything like soil and uh, uh, water so we don't need to worry about all those things so that is also one idea and also the best thing in that is you can see a lot of gardeners over there other people also so you can share the advice and like you can share the ideas with them so we have uh, I've tried that also like two years ago, but the only problem with that was like, I need to go there every time to water the plant every day. So that was the main problem that I faced. So I stick with my backyard gardening. So can you go to the next slide? So by choosing the place and setting up the raised bed, uh, I got the loam compost from the local nurseries. Like the good idea to get it from the local nurseries because when I'm setting up the garden bed for the first, we need like in a big uh, amount of soil. So we can like these local nurseries, uh, they deliver the soil to the backyard like this, like by uh, in the picture and they put it in the garden bed. So it's easy to spread it out in the bed. So that's what I did. And also another tip is uh, like adding the leaves that fall during the fall season from the trees, just till the soil. So these will become a, a good a fertilizer to the soil. Like it will, they will decompose and uh, they will become a good fertilizer also for the next season. Uh, and also uh, by the cow manure, every year, that's what I added. Like it has like full of nutrients and also it's organic. Uh, and make sure the soil is like three to four feet depth. So this is mainly like uh, setting up the bed and using the and adding the soil for the gardening work. It's like the prep work. So once we set up this bed, we can use it like uh, for a few years. I've set up like in 2013. I'm still using that. So it's like only one time process mostly. So can you go to the next slide? So, and one more thing, uh, like what I do is I grow the plants from the seeds. Like for example, like 
all these uh, ridge gods, bottle gods and all. When I first started, like in 2013, I couldn't able to find those plants in the nurseries much. So what I did was like even I was not even finding the seeds of those vegetables in the Home Depot or any nurseries here, like in the New England, like in Massachusetts. So what I did, like I bought the seeds from the seeds of India, but nowadays we can buy like in any stores, like local stores also. Now they are selling those things. So we can get, I got these cups, like the small cups as in the picture uh, from the stores. Uh, and I put the soil and then what I did was like soak the seeds two to three days before we putting in the soil. What it does is it fastens the... Hello? Can you hear me, Andy? And lay the slide previously. So we time. can hear, we can hear. Andy. Okay, yeah. Please go on. So what like what happens is like if you soak the seeds, uh, it fastens the germination process. So the plants will go fast, will come fast. So that's why I always uh, practice this. So I saw this idea somewhere in the YouTube. So I've started practicing that and it, it is very good idea. And also like uh, uh, usually I do the seedings like for vegetables, like tomatoes, eggplants, green beans, like those vegetables, those cannot tolerate cold. But like once we put it in March, like late March or early April, I put these like, to put these cups in the sunlight for every uh, every day like for a few hours and then put it inside like when the cold weather comes we can use the grow lights also so that we can avoid the process of putting them in the sunlight but i've never done that so i don't have much idea about the grow lights and also if it is like lettuce and spinach those kind of leafy vegetables i just sow them on the directly on the ground because they tolerate the cold uh, and they come very nicely also and very fast and very nicely. And believe me, these organically grown vegetables, they are very tasty as compared to the vegetables that we get it from the stores. And also one more thing is I always buy the organic and non-GMO seeds also. I like in that way to eat, so I do that. Uh, this is one way or we can buy the saplings directly from the nurseries uh, either in May or June because in the New England the weather is cold in the March so if we put saplings directly in the soil they would survive so you, I, we can buy it directly and we can plant them directly on the ground either in May or around May time that is also one, one idea. So can you go to the next screen? And so once we get the saplings, what I always practice is I give like sufficient space between the plants uh, so that the plants can grow like with its full potential. So that's one important and also uh, like same family, like same plant family, uh, just plant them at the same, like close to each other and also rotate the crops every year. We are not supposed to uh, plant the same family plants at the same area every year. It's better to rotate the crop in different places so that uh, uh, they can get like different kinds of nutrients. And this is another tip, like wine plants takes like a lot of space so that's why it's better not to plant near the tomatoes or eggplants, eggplants. That is one idea. Can you go to the next slide, Andy? And also I will speak a little bit about the fertilizers too, as I am more interested like in the organic farming. So I don't use any synthetic fertilizers. So I always get the organic fertilizer spikes which are very good in my experience. They work for me very nice. And I get it usually in Amazon. And if you get like insects or bugs, I use the neem oil or a Epsom salt. Neem oil is very good and make sure to apply the neem oil like for every couple of uh, week, couple of months. 
So it, which is very good. Usually this is the recommended nitrogen phosphorus potassium formula only that I got, like that I got it from some websites and YouTube and it, that's like my experience too. Uh, and as I said, like make sure to uh, apply the neem oil like once in a few months, which is very good. And can you go to the next slide? Anna? And these are the few vegetables, like some of my produce that I got it like uh, around 2014, because I used to take pictures at that time a lot, but nowadays I'm not taking much. So I have like different kinds of vegetables, like uh, tomatoes, beans, cabbage, peppers, eggplants, and also this um, uh, bottle gourd round one. And also this is the vegetable garden mine. Uh, you can see the bottle gourd here and And can you go to the next screen? And this, like, as I said, like we expanded our garden. This is another vegetable bed that we did uh, like two years ago. My husband built this trellis and everything. He did an amazing job. And you can see the beautiful ridge gods crop here. And we also did this um, garlic uh, produce. We got it like, but so much garlic, it was, it lasts like for almost a year. I didn't buy the garlic for a whole year. So this is my experience. Hope it helped. Hope it helps to some people. Yeah. And thank you for giving me the opportunity, Andy. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Madhvi Samugar, for your wonderful session and all the help uh, tips for gardening. That to organic gardening really helps all our NRF to kickstart this project also. So next one will be our Shobha uh, Gaiti Danti. So I will just say a few things. Hold on one second. And also before that, I want to tell you our Bala Voletiga also is there is our... Uh, is also part of health and fitness committee is also part of our advisory group also thanks balagaru for joining here yeah. yeah, sure Andy. yeah so next will be shobagaru started gardening 15 years ago she is, lives in Nestor, massachusetts her husband naga donti she has been running kuman center and hometown she is active in the NRA Boston's Rujina Committee as well as Boston Wellness Committee. She has very experience with hydroponic gardening with you. She is going to share how we can do that in indoor also in the winter times, all that stuff. So let's give it her. So Shobagaru, you can start and the next your slides I'll be presenting. Shobha Gaitri Donti Garu is our next speaker. Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Nirva, uh, NRI VA Health, Happiness and Fitness Committee. Thank you for uh, giving us the, this opportunity to speak. Um, as, uh, uh, and uh, thank you, Ashok Garu, for the introduction. Uh, my family and I moved to Massachusetts in 1997 after living for about 10 years in Texas. And of course, the growing season for Texas and Massachusetts is way, way different. Massachusetts is so much shorter. But uh, uh, taking it back a little bit, I was never into gardening when I was growing up. Our family, uh, my parents are both uh, avid gardeners. And even though we had a very robust garden growing up in our home, anything I touched would always die. So uh, the joke was I was the only one in the family without a green thumb. So uh, what happened is when we moved to Massachusetts, uh, fast forward, uh, I decided to give gardening a try one more time. And lo and behold, it worked. So I started uh, doing my outdoor garden. I built my uh, flower, uh, built my beds and uh, you know went from there. And uh, every summer, uh, Ashokari can go to the next slide. As you can see, every summer um, I grew my own vegetables and this is uh, some of the things that, I, that grew in my garden. Uh, but uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the outdoor gardening season in New England is approximately three months, very, very, very short period. So uh, I started thinking, you know, what do I do in the fall, winter, uh, you know, uh, fall and winter 
and early spring when we can't grow anything outside. So um, over the years, I tried growing in pots, uh, but it never worked. Uh, but uh, eventually, one day during our local merchant associations meeting, uh, one uh, a lady presented about hydroponic uh, gardening and uh, hydrophone uh, and um, in the tower garden. So this is resonated a lot with me because this is what I was looking for. Uh, you can go to the next slide, Ashokaru. Yes, and so I was very excited. I went out and got my tower garden uh, from the company Juice Plus. And uh, this is the picture, the first time I uh, you know, assembled it in October of 2016. That was my Deepali present to myself. Okay, next slide, Ashokaru. Okay, I'm going to share a short video of how this works. Uh, since the audio is not working very well, I will try to talk over it, okay? So as you can see, this is my assembled tower. And as we move closer, you can see that it has 20 growing pods. And here's a close-up of a pod. It looks like an open basket. At the bottom is a 20-gallon tank. So, and I also have the tower on wheels, so it's easy to move around when necessary. Inside the tank, uh, you can see it's, there's a pump. Which you may or may there it is. There you can see it. And I'm uh, now going to close the tank cover. So uh, if this is on a timer. The water is on for 15 minutes and off for 45 minutes. That's the cycle that it is. And it keeps going through its, uh, throughout the day. The next step is preparing the rock wool. Uh, this is the rock wool where we put the seeds and place it in the tower pods. Okay, so here I'm getting uh, the rock wool ready with some uh, organic spinach seeds. I plant about uh, two or three seeds every rock wool. Uh, 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 And once we put the seeds, I put some vermiculite. Which is basically a growing medium. So uh, the vermiculite uh, uh, provides a consistent release of added fertilizer and improves uh, moisture retention and hence promotes growth. So we fill it about halfway through and take the cubes and put them in the pods. I have my pods numbered so I know what is growing where, especially in the beginning. But uh, you're not going to be able to hear it, but uh, the water just came on. And uh, you know, it's the open pod. You can see how the water hits the, uh, you know, the basket. And that way it keeps the, uh, the uh, rock wool moist. You can see that it's already become wet in a couple of, uh, you know, in about 30 seconds. Okay, so this is how uh, the rock wool, uh, you know, uh, maintains the moisture. And uh, the basket, and uh, you fill each uh, of the baskets with rock wool and seeds, and sit back, enjoy, and just wait for things to grow. It takes about uh, two to three weeks for things to start sprouting. And in about uh, four to five weeks, you'll have a very robust uh, garden. And in about uh, six weeks, you can start uh, harvesting your produce. Uh, I have, uh, you know, I am currently growing these current, um, uh, you know, spinach, rainbow chard, sorrel, amaranth, cilantro. Uh, I took out the mint from my tower because mint, the you know, the roots were just going and. Um, uh, you know, covering up the basket, so I, I'm no longer growing the mint in my tower. Saran? But I'm growing the mint, the main, methi, and uh, gongura in my tower. Okay, so next slide. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Okay, this is my uh, tower. 
one month after I planted my seeds. So as you can see, uh, you know, a lot of things are already growing. And these are some of the pictures of uh, the things that I grow in my garden. You can see uh, peas, cucumbers, uh, peppers. Over the years, I've uh, rotated crops. So, uh, you know, I get a variety throughout the year. Okay, next, uh, you can go to the next slide. The plants that I've grown in the past, tomatoes, eggplants, green chilies, Brussels sprouts, romaine lettuce, bib lettuce, arugula, a variety of greens are all that I've grown. Uh, next slide. And there are certain plants that grow well in the tower and certain ones that don't. So uh, greens and leafy vegetables like arugula, kale, chard, lettuce, mustard, greens, etc., they grow very well. Uh, fruit bearing crops like cucumbers, green beans, peas, peppers, tomatoes, zucchini, any types of squashes and pumpkins grow well. And herbs, you can see cilantro, basil, dill, mint, uh, parsley, thyme, uh, you know, uh, oregano, etc. All of those grow well. So any fruit bearing crops, the only drawback of this is they will need to be hand pollinated when indoors because there are no bees to do the pollinating. So any plants with vines will need to grow or will need the grow cage for support. Okay, next uh, slide. Okay, my tower has uh, grow lights that's on for 16 hours and off for eight hours. So the wat water pump is on for 15 minutes and off for 45 minutes. And that goes throughout the day. So I also check the pH balance weekly and um, you know, make sure that the pH is maintained between 5.5 and 6.5. If pH is low, I use the pH plus, plus, which is the base to increase the pH. And if it is high, I use the negative that is acid to lower the pH. But the water in my town, for the, uh, ever since I started, I've never had to use the acid to lower the pH. It's always using the base to increase the pH. I also add liquid nutrients, tonic A and tonic B periodically. And uh, when the water, uh, I add it when needed to and adjust pH balance every time I add water. And if it's, um, you know, fruit bearing crops are grown, frequency of filling the water tank increases. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Okay, now where can I buy these? I got mine from Tower Garden, which is a Juice Plus company, which is, uh, the website is there, towergarden.com. You can also get them uh, similar products on um, Etsy and amazon.com. Uh, there are other companies out there that also do this. And uh, you can Google them and uh, you know find one that works for you. I can only speak for the Tower Garden and cannot say anything good or not good about the other companies because that's the only experience I have, I have had. And if you want more information, you know, please feel free to email me. I will, uh, you know, direct you to the right person. Um, uh, there are a couple of people I know uh, in that company. I can direct you to them to get your own tower garden. Okay, next slide. Okay, a uh, little bit background. Uh, my parents, uh, uh, my dad is an agricultural, was an agricultural scientist. And uh, my mom also um, is into, uh, you know, uh, making uh, plant nutrients. So the family is all into, uh, you know, the all into this uh, growing vegetables and, uh, you know, having a good garden. But uh, like I said earlier, growing up, I never, um, you know, made use of their experience. And um, right now, um, you know, I wish I had listened to them a lot more. And, uh, you know, thanks to them, I am here. Also, uh, there's one more slide. Uh, my family, uh, thank you for putting up with all my quirks and everything. Uh, Priya, Arun, and my husband, Naga. Uh, they all uh, enjoy the, uh, they've all helped me on and off uh, during uh, the growing season. And of course, uh, I'm an empty nester right now. So uh, Naga helps me quite a bit in, uh, when I start my garden every year. Okay, thank you for all for listening and I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have.
thanks shobha garu for your wonderful session regard hydroponic grow, growing because winter time is very tough right in, in especially in the east coast we need to have that <laughs> really helpful absolutely absolutely yeah. next one so next speaker is our prakash dandagaru so he is also from boston only so his self learner started his gardening since 5 years ago uh, self learning from youtube getting help from friends and backyard gardening started prashant is long term nrv volunteer also he was boston chapter lead and coach here from matrimony committee is uh, he lives uh, with along with wife supriya danda and kids rohan and riya boston he works for financial industry so thanks prashant garu for joining today's session it's yours now thank you ashok garu am i audible yep okay namaste everyone and thank you for giving me this opportunity today i'll be sharing my gardening journey as well as giving you tips here uh, i give importance to the word lazy gardener because i am basically a lazy guy so what i'm going to talk today is i'm going to show you things that you can do to reduce your hard work as well as not compromise on the uh, produce so stay tuned for that that's why i mentioned it as uh, lazy gardening <clears throat> gardening not only adds years to your life it also adds life to your years um my family loves gardening and uh, i actually like the joy that comes out of it basically it takes you away from electronic gadgets so that you could uh, enjoy your calm time in your garden it's also like a th therapy and uh, it, it, it you are in the natural environment so it helps you a lot one of the great things we like about gardening is the anticipation that it gives every day in the morning when you go to your garden you're looking for that new small tomato or the flower that turned into a vegetable <laughs> or um, the new um vegetable that came out of nowhere or the small creeper that has caught hold of the uh, uh, trellis so it's all the small small things the joy that you can keep watching it's like a live movie there that you go and uh, take a look at it everywhere so my journey started off uh, in a funny way uh, so i started off with a small pot and thought i would get a tomato plant and see how it will go and it didn't grow that well because when i started i didn't even have the basic knowledge that i should put a hole in the bottom of the pot so i overwatered it and the tomato plant died oh. after giving one tomato and so that's how i started right and uh, i wanted to improve it obviously that's where i started looking at youtube videos talking to friends and self learning and helping each other getting tips from the garden club and you can look at my produce in the middle of the screen that's all the stuff we got in like uh, just two days or the weekend that we could go on the harvest so this can be done by anyone and we are all here to help you and that's where uh, we are going to share all those steps and on the right side you can see ganesha that we did at home with my kids and myself so gardening is not just produce it also gives you so much happiness the ganesha that you see is all the vegetables that we plucked from our garden took it to the puja room with kids and we did it with uh, uh, with my kids and they had so much fun we do it every year uh, the shape of ganesha changes but it's all about uh, vegetables so i'm sure you all would also like to start this and have fun with family and kids and enjoy your gardening uh, can we go to next slide please so i'm going to give you a couple of steps how you could start Uh, if you follow this uh, you will be able to have a beautiful garden in your backyard too since uh, we have so many people on the call from around us i'm going to explain this concept of what works well for your zip code so the us department of agriculture right they have given this website how you would start a step one you will go to this website that plant hardiness and type in your city or state or zip code as you see in the image where you're seeing on the left hand side like for example i typed in boston in may and it basically gives you your zone so the zone is what the agriculture team has classified and it varies on the temperature that applies to your city and each zone uh, for example in uh, new england area uh, it's obviously the winters are harsh and uh, 
there is something called the first freeze free date that is when after which you are supposed to plant your plant into the soil outside you can grow it indoors for us pretty much uh, the first freeze free date starts like may 15 as you can see in the slide i come under zone 6a and the last freeze date is somewhere around october 15th so basically what happens is after october 15th the temperatures fall so bad that your produce is not the plant is not going to be able to uh, give more produce it basically goes into a state of shock and it stops producing your uh, um, harvest and then there are chances that you still get your produce after that but pretty much this is your uh, time frame so i would suggest you start with step 1 understand your zip code what is your temperature and what are your freeze dates if it's there and pretty much that is the time frame that you can uh, grow your produce and um, once you do that the second uh, link is when the planting schedule that is the freeze dates that you see on the right side and next slide please ashwin okay now what to grow so each of these zones right um so this is the link for the zone 6 similar to that you have multiple uh, links for each of those zones so this is your calendar that runs from january to december so it pretty much tells you what are the proven vegetables for your zone for your zip code when you should plant them and when you could harvest so the orange one is the starting seeding indoors then the uh, a greenish tent is when you can plant it outdoors and when you can harvest it so you can see all these are uh, proven uh, vegetables that will work fine in my zone which is zone 6a but on top of this also you could also start your uh, indian vegetables uh, like uh, all the gods um, and those will also work fine uh, let's go to the next slide please okay so you found your uh, zone you know what seeds to buy what samplings to buy like i said i am a lazy gardener i tried my hands with grow lights and uh, seeds it didn't work out good for me so i chose the simpler route um, i usually go to um, home depot or there are people here in my uh, town who sell small saplings i just buy the saplings and put them into the garden beds <laughs> so where do you put uh, your saplings outside so there are two options which are available again for lazy people uh, i would say you can either get your grow bags there are links in this slide at the end from amazon you can buy it the grow bags are the bags the green bags that you see in the third image um, in the center they are pretty much like your um, uh, small bags that you take for grocery but it is aerated you put your soil into the grow bags and then you put the saplings into the grow bags and it just grows now i wanted something like a permanent um, garden area so i went into this concept of raised garden beds so on the rightmost image the fourth image that you see there is the wood like thing uh, that is the raised garden bed again uh, me being a lazy guy i don't want to sit cutting wood uh, in my house so this is a pre built garden bed that they sell in uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Lowe's, and even on Amazon. If if you know how to take two Lego pieces and connect to each other, you can do this. So you can see the grooves there in the vertical uh, uh, thing. There are like four grooves. So you basically it comes in pieces. You take that uh, big wooden plank and then you insert it into the groove. And this bed can be assembled in like uh, maybe ten fifteen minutes. That's it. you can pretty much go to your garden and assemble it right there and you are done and you are just buying all this it comes in your uh, postage or you can go to your home depot store or uh, you can just buy this it's called raised garden bed or the other option is the uh, green bags uh, that you have uh, in the third image you just buy the bag open it fill it with soil and you are done the beauty with uh, grow bags is when you are done for the season like in october or november you pretty much empty the bag you fold it and keep it inside it doesn't even occupy space in your garden okay so you have the garden bed or the grow grow bags now what do you do you obviously have to put fill soil in it so you there are a couple of things you can do uh, you can if you have costco in your area you can go by the 
a raised bed soil. So it's explicitly called raised bed soil that you can put it in your raised bed also on your grow bags. Or if you have a nursery around, uh, you can go and ask for a mixture of uh, compost and loam. And then there is this um, second image which you see there, which is the uh, black cow. It's nothing but cow dung or cow manure. Uh, this you get it in Amazon, you get it in Home Depot, you get it everywhere. You just buy a big bag of it. So you mix all these things, the compost, loam, and the um, cow manure, and you pretty much dump it on the uh, uh, grow bag or on the uh, raised bed. Next is where do you keep this uh, garden um, grow bag or the uh, uh, garden, uh, raised garden bed is in a place where there is sunlight more than six hours. Don't keep it below trees, huge trees, because they are not going to get sunlight. And don't keep it um, away from sunlight, like where the, your home has a shade. It's not going to work. So you need to monitor your house for a few days to see which areas have more sunlight and keep it. Now, here is what I did. Apart from the um, sunlight alone, I kept it in such a way that my lawn sprinklers can water my raised garden bed so that I don't even have to uh, go and water it explicitly. And I can control my sprinklers with my apps. There are a lot of um, uh, timings and things like that. <clears throat> so um, that is the uh, step six. And uh, step seven is you buy the plant from your local nursery. Home Depot sells a lot of uh, plants. And every week you keep going, they change the inventory. So you get uh, beautiful plants on Home Depot and Lowe's also. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Now, no need to go to the previous slide. One thing I want to tell about raised garden bed is cedar and pine are two wood types that you get uh, raised garden beds. You can go for anything. Each has like uh, 10 years of life or so. And I pr personally went with a wooden raised garden bed. There are metal ones available too. I wanted to stay away from metals and whatever it comes. So I went for a wooden uh, raised garden bed. Okay, now one of the things um, that um, is very important in gardening is you are giving the plant a very high nutritious soil. But the thing is not only the plant, but also weeds grow out of it. So there's a lot of hard work throughout the year that you'll be visiting your garden and removing the weeds. That's a very painful process. I wanted to stay away from it. So if you see in the middle, there's a black sheet. It's called a weed sheet. If you buy this, make a hole in it, only enough to plant your uh, sapling, it would save you uh, tons of work in your uh, garden. Uh, you don't have to, re I never go to the garden to remove weed ever since I got this uh, uh, sheet, the weed sheet. And again, you get this weed sheet in Amazon. I have a link at the end of the thing and uh, Home Depot anywhere. It's not just the weed sheet. The weed sheet should, should, uh, should uh, stick to the ground so what you need to buy is something called the landscape staple. That's an image right there. Again, you get it in all uh, the hardware stores. So you basically fill the garden bed with soil. You place the weed sheet on top of it. You take the staple and you basically press it on the uh, uh, weed sheet so that it holds the sheet to the ground. And then you take a knife, make a small hole. It could be a square or a circle enough like how you see in the image and then you dig the soil out and you put the seed or the sapling into it if you do this method entire year for the season you don't have to remove weed because weeds would not grow because the black sheet is blocking the sunlight and it prevents the uh, weeds to grow and this is an excellent tip again a tip from a lazy gardener okay so now you have the plant you put the soil you put the weed sheet you're all set your watering is taken care of and uh, what is the next thing, right? So the next thing is plants, especially climbers, need a lot of area to climb, to catch hold of and climb. Especially, right, uh, if you see my image there, uh, that is uh, two types of sorakai, your gods. One is a lengthy one, which is there at the second one, and the fat one, the round sorakai, which is there. So these are very heavy. And uh, the lengthy one, even my, uh, my one of my, uh, uh, produce was like uh, 27, 28 inches. And it was very heavy to even carry. So you need a trellis which is powerful enough to hold the weight of it. And you, you can get like uh, 
six to seven or 10 of these at any point of time. So what I did is I wanted something strong, but something very easy to build. So if you see on the left side, there are uh, pipes. These are basically plumbing pipes that you get in Home Depot that you use during construction. So you take those plumbing pipes, it's available in various sizes. My area was like 12 feet. So I took like a 10 feet pipe and a connector and, a, and a, another two feet pipe and connected them. They're just screws, they just screw in. It needs some work, but you can screw in. And in the bottom, you see those different types of connectors. Uh, again, this is like Legos, but it needs some a bit of work. So you basically screw those pipes in and I basically built like a table that like you see um, as square on the top with the legs. And the legs are basically on the soil. You can see in the image there and put a clamp to one side of the siding of my house and the other side is a fence. So it just pulls onto it. And on top of that, there is something called chicken mesh that you buy in Home Depot also. And the chicken mesh covers the pipe. You can see the uh, image where the uh, the fat sort is hanging. The chicken mesh pretty much hooks onto it. So you can pretty much do this in a weekend with those pipes and um, uh, this trellis is very uh, strong, like it's been there for a few years now, and it can withhold the weight of uh, a very fat, uh, multiple fat sorokais over there. And this is something um, you can uh, take care of it. And those pipes are galvanized, and you get a paint, uh, which you can just paint on top of it that prevents rusting. And it's pretty strong, and it, it, it will be there for a few years. So this is something uh, we figured out. It worked out good for us and it's been there pretty good. I added like two and I'm going to add two more later. So that area is going to be very good. And if you see there where I'm standing, those are the sprinklers. They just come up and they spray the water on the garden bed and the garden bed is actually below those uh, saplings that you see on the right side. And there are explicit uh, watering uh, sprinkler systems too. You can also explore that with timers and things like that, you run a wire and it goes around and sprinkles. That is another option. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so um, with garden, you also have problems when uh, bugs come in. Uh, usually there are something small bugs called aphids and uh, spider mites and uh, um, you get black spots and mildew. No matter what you do, it's just luck. This may come, may not come, so there's nothing we can do. But when you notice them, there are a few things we can do. The best thing is the neem oil concentrate uh, that you see. I have links in the slide. You can get it off Amazon, Home Depot, anywhere. You get the concentrate, mix it with water. The ratios are on the, uh, on the bottle itself. And you can spray it um, once you see the uh, holes in the uh, uh, leaves. Then you know something is going on. You can spray that, and that will take care of um, the pests, most of the pests will be taken care of that. And then um, coming to fertilizers, right? Um, black cow is what I predominantly use. That's just cow manure. And uh, two times a season, I use Epsom salt. It's Epsom is actually hydrated magnesium sulfate. It improves the plant's uh, flowering and fruiting ability. So you don't have to overdo it. Like uh, twice in the entire season, uh, that should be good enough. And if you see a plant like really dying or something, it needs to be enhanced. A miracle grow is good. Uh, they have the organic uh, performance uh, um, miracle grow, the yellow bottle with the black thing. I have links for that too. It's basically small granules. You can just spray it on the around the plant, and it takes care of it. And the neem oil spray usually I've seen it uh, only for the god plants like all sorokai and uh, climbers and creepers, you get those uh, small aphids. And if you don't read them, it spreads to other plants too. Uh, so then uh, the neem oil pretty much takes care of it. Can we go to the next slide please? Okay, so this committee is about joy and it's not just gardening, right? Uh, so this slide shows all the benefits you can get. It's not just the produce uh, you do. With that fresh produce, um, you, if you cook, the taste is going to be excellent. So all this stuff was done by my wife from the produce that I we, we got from our garden. So it's um, priceless, as you can see. 
And there on the right side is our rose plant and that rose milkshake is actually from the um, flower, the, ro the rose flowers, the petals, we took it and we made the milkshake. Uh, so um, this is all the benefits. Another reason for you to uh, have the garden so that you can enjoy the various uh, delicacies like the sorakai alwa and all those things and the potlakai paisa from the potlakai from our garden and the katmirchi and everything. These are all homegrown stuff. The taste is out of the world and uh, it's all fresh. You can feel it when you cut the vegetable and uh, this is the reason why you really want to get into gardening. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so here, another thing I would like to tell about gardening is, um, she's my daughter, Ria. Uh, she's now six years old. So just imagine the joy when she is hungry, she doesn't run to the kitchen. She opens the back door and she goes into the garden, plucks the small tomatoes, the strawberries, the raspberries, and she eats. So that is the joy you get. And that's a lifetime memory that you're leaving it for your kids. That And it's fresh food, right? And it's um, organic food. We don't have to worry. So she's holding the uh, sorpe from our uh, garden produce. And uh, it's, it's great joy that you can have. It's the best thing that you can do. Spend time in your garden and produce uh, your own uh, produce and enjoy with your family and kids. And they also see the growth cycle of a plant and they see what joy it brings to uh, uh, them. Uh, again, uh, good luck to your garden and uh, reach out to me and the other presenters with any questions. And the best thing about garden is not only the produce, right? You take it and share it with your friends and your extended NRIVA family, right? Uh, it just uh, makes everything uh, great. So thanks for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Prashant Garo, for your wonderful session. As you mentioned, this is good. They grow in the garden. Kids enjoy away from gadgets. That's one way of staying away from electronic devices and growing organic vegetables, enjoying that with the nature. That's really wonderful. So next we'll go to the uh, next session. Uh, Krishna Vendi Vimpati Garu will talk about Q&A sessions, what we have in the past as well as what we collected so far in the chat also. Krishna Vendi Garu lives in also Upton, Massachusetts with her husband Srinivas Vimpati, two kids, Ramya and Arjun Vimpati. Both work software industry, has been volunteering in NRA since 2010. She coordinated this with uh, Srujana team last time in the Boston chapter also. Uh, Krishna Vinigaru, you can start about q and session. Thank you, Ashok Guru, uh, for nice introduction. And one more uh, thing we forgot to mention, this is the plants we have appendix. And after the webinar, we are going to share all this stuff. The webinar we upload into the this one, we'll share you with all the people. They can look at whenever they want this slideshow. Everything will be available. Also, we're going to create a group for health and fitness committee you can join we'll invite you everybody so that then you can post your questions comments as the season starts everything will be there to answer for you excellent uh, thank you speakers uh, thank you um, madhvi garu shobha garu and prashant garu uh, you did an amazing job uh, in introducing the gardening tips and a uh, few questions are there uh, from the from the uh, from the chat. I would like to I consolidated few of them. Uh, Suma Kumar Garu uh, asked for three to four feet depth. So how many inches of the uh, how many inches deep is needed? Is the question from Prashant Garu? Okay. Uh, the question is to me, right, the raised garden beds that I used are come as three plants. Um, so I would say it is one and a half feet. Um, that is good enough. Uh, and then uh, the soil below it is also available for you. But like most of our houses, the soil is not good because it's construction soil. So the one and a half feet is good enough for the plant and the roots to spread across. That's good enough. So I, I went with a raised garden, but which has three plants, uh, as you saw in my image. Um, 
and this question is for everybody all speakers uh, why do you like garden what, what was the reason for madhvi garu thank you yeah yeah as i said it's like more stress relieving activity for me and also uh, one of the good thing is it's like a family activity if we can involve like both kids and husband now my husband is like more interested than than me he does more garden uh, like all the vegetables and everything Correct. so that's like that's like a feel good activity and also finally if you see the produce you really love them you can see the difference uh like nowadays what happened like whenever i do the garden i feel like they are my kids like i go every day in the morning my husband and myself we both go every day morning and we check how they are doing like every few hours couple couple of hours like uh anyway we both are working from home right now now it's like more like every few hours we go whenever we get some problem like in the office just go there and see the plants it's like a yes. more stress reliever for at least for me yes it's like a petting a, an animal is like a petting a plant exactly yeah and sometimes if i don't have any meetings or anything i go there and i sit my i put my chair and i just take my laptop and go there and sit and peacefully working it's very nice yes yes thank you and uh, this question is from prashant akula a uh, banana peels are good source of potassium can we use that um madhvi garu prashant garu shobha garu do you know like uh, banana peels are used for uh, uh, potassium resource uh, i have yes no indeed. idea Mm-hmm. yes and the uh, um, in our chapter people have done that especially for your jasmine plant and uh, for curry leaves i have mm-hmm. heard that um, the banana peel that you left over you soak it in water and you take that water and pour it um, again it's potassium yeah what the person was saying is correct you can also do it okay. and also they can use compost right you yes. for the compost and then they can use it in the yeah. and uh, a question for uh, mixing the neem oil how do you uh, i heard that uh, mixing neem oil with water sticking to the walls it seems so how do you mix well like uh, what is the ratio do you suggest any ratio for the audience prashant garu or madhvi garu anyone any speaker can you chip in the ratio is actually in the uh, the back of the bottle whichever bottle you get um there's a ratio of mixing the neem oil and uh, water and i have not experienced the oil sticking to the side of the bottle so uh, i can't speak for that okay um actually there are uh, make sure you're not just taking the concentrate and just putting it then it's the plant is going to die you dilute it with water and like shobagaru said the, the ratios are there um mm. we just follow it and then i have a small uh, bottle with a spray gun kind of thing manual one we just use it to spray it. Uh, i haven't had the problem it hasn't stuck to the uh, surfaces yes. um a lot of people are asking about uh, uh, so, uh, where can we buy amazon and all so i think we are we are going to share the ppt and recording session so those answers will be answered i'll go for next one uh, is there any wood that you prefer for a raised bed cedar or anything else pressure treated is good yes yes um pressure treated is good um and cedar is a uh, good um it, basically when you go to the shop or see online it has a rough life uh, of that and when i saw mine was like close to 10 years i don't expect for it to last 10 years but even if i get like 6 7 years that's uh, good enough and uh, these plants right the plants that i showed uh, you yes. can just buy a plank and replace it in case it rots or something you can just throw it and get a plank and put it in yes and uh, people are asking about like uh, uh, is there any whatsapp group apart from uh, uh, we know we have in our boston uh, gardening group uh, for national is there any whatsapp group uh, audience is asking i don't know how yeah ashok garu or later we can uh, respond to that question i'll move on to another question uh is there anything alternate uh, alternate um, garden i mean alternate uh, vegetable fruits and is there any alternate that we need to 
um, grow. Like uh, for example, one plant is uh, uh, vegetable, one plant is uh, fruit, one plant is again vegetable. Is there anything that you recommend? This was the question in the past. Yeah. Is there a good source of the soil that makes it utilize better? Are you asking about alternating plants in the bed? Yes. Okay, like so... Yeah, okay. Go ahead, Madhavika. Uh, go ahead, Anupar. It's okay. Yeah. So, so uh, for, for vegetables that need pollination, that is the same, um, same plant is giving you a male and a female flower, it needs pollination. We all know in science that honeybees yes. play a very important role. Yes. So what you need to do is um, you need to put um, flowers closer to those beds so that it can attract honeybees that help in pollination. Um, tomatoes and other plants, they, they are self-pollinating, so you don't need flowers there. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just an aesthetic thing. If you want to have a, a flower and a vegetable, you can go for it. Um, only for the pollination for plants that need pollination. Uh, otherwise, it's your choice, just a look and feel thing. And okay. um, um, I would suggest don't put both in the same bed, maybe in the adjacent bed. And also look into the sunlight blocking. Like plants like uh, gods and sorakai, they have huge uh, leaves. So they're going mm. to cover up the uh, sunlight. So if you mm. put a small flowering plant below it, it's not going to grow. So mm. you have to like give a gap and put it in the next bed. Thank you. That was a great suggestion. Um, how much is the cost for a uh, tower garden, Shobha? Yes, uh, there are a lot of options available. Uh, mm -hmm. I got mine about uh, eight years ago. At that time, it was about 750 to, if I remember correctly, between 750 and 850. And uh, it comes uh, uh, you know, with the initial starter kit. Uh, I don't know how it, how much it is now. I haven't kept up with it because I got mine and, you know, that was it. But I still get my, uh, you know, plant nutrients from that company. And um, so you just have to look up Tower Garden to see how yeah. much it costs. Yeah. But uh, there are a lot of options out there. Uh, Amazon, Etsy, you get all these uh, different uh, growing options. So you can look into it to see which one works best for you. Yeah, because I told you, right, HC and all, there is available like $180, also 28 pot hydroponic garden, which nowadays a lot of competitive, there's, you can get different locations also. But Correct. With, yeah. yeah. Uh, this question is about a mint. Mint grows like a weed. So do you suggest a growing plant, a mint plant in the backyard or in the pot? Uh, I would say that, I can say that, like the mint, it's better to have its dedicated spot. Uh, don't grow anything else over there. It's the same with Amarnath, like Totakura, also same thing. Uh, once we do, uh, it grows every year by itself. You don't need to uh, seed every year. So it's better to have the dedicated spot or in the pots. That is the best idea because I experienced the same problem with the Totapura Amarnath. Uh, once my husband, we didn't know the, about this weed thing at first. So he just put like the seeds like the, on the whole bed. So it's like for a few years, it was coming every year by itself. Mm -hmm. So it's better to have its dedicated spot. Okay. And yeah, uh, that mint also, um, like I said, it's uh, it's very dangerous because in the tower when I had the mint, it just sort of uh, or oh, took uh, took over the roots or so took over everything. So I stopped growing the mint in the tower. So okay. yes, it's better to have a dedicated spot for mint. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And uh, what do you suggest? Proportions of soil and manure mix, cow manure mix. Uh, what is the proportion that you suggest in it? So the um, compost and loam, uh, what we went with was 50-50%. And uh, the black cow, right, uh, if you buy the bag, um, it tells you how much of black cow you need to put into um, a rectangular quart. So you just do the math. Um, so for example, my if my garden bed is eight feet, one square, there are two squares, four feet by four feet, with a divider in the uh, um, center. So you get a four feet by two feet square, and then you just do the math for calculating the uh, quantity, and then figure out if uh, one bag can handle so much uh, 
uh, square feet, then how much you need, how many bags you need for the square that you have, because you get the garden goods in different sizes and then use that number of uh, bags. Don't overdo the manure because, because it's very powerful and it burns the uh, uh, roots once you have the sapling. Uh, so calculate the quantity based on the bag, you turn around the bag it shares and use it accordingly. If it's lower, it's okay, just don't overdo it. Yes, uh, this question is from the past, like root veggies, easy to grow, but at the same time, like um, if you put mesh under the bed, how can they grow? The, it stops the growth of the plant, root plant. So what are your suggestion? If in the my root, yeah, my root veggies, I do in grow bags. Okay. And there's certain grow bags you get with a little window. So okay. you can open it, so you don't have to dig it out of the, you know, regular grow bags, you open the window. And then you can dig your veggies out over there. It's uh, at the bottom. So uh, I've been using those for about three years now. So mm -hmm. those really work out better than the regular uh, grow bags. So but Krishna I have veggies uh, in grow bags. Yes. Uh, President Garu looks like joining. We can want to talk a few words. Can we share that one? A few, few minutes. Uh, yes. Um, sorry, yes. sorry to cut you guys, Andy. Yeah, President Garu is here, and luckily. You know, he's in India, but I requested him to join for a couple of minutes. And uh, such a great session. Uh, President Garu, are you on the line? Yes, uh, uh, Secretary Garu, Praveen Garu, and uh, everyone. Uh, sorry to... <laughs> I know, I know yeah. you're busy. Uh, thank, thank minutes, President sorry. Garu, for joining the session. For joining the session. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity you know, in the middle of the session. I uh, would like to really appreciate uh, you know, uh, those who are on the call, uh, my leadership, uh, BOTs and uh, you know, our President-Elect Ramesh Garu uh, earlier was there and Secretary Garu is all the way leading and uh, all our giant secretaries and board of trustees and uh, everyone in the leadership. You know, uh, Thank you for joining the call. Uh, and. Uh, Ashok, uh, Ashok Garu, I just want to let you know you are doing an amazing job as a health, happiness and fitness uh, team chair. Uh, you are leading all the way. I know you yourself is a man in action and you always uh, do great things. And all your team, uh, kudos to you all, first of all. And uh, today's speakers, Madhavi Garu, Gayatri Garu, Prashant Garu, uh, amazing, amazing job. And I got uh, already received a uh, you know, a feedback uh, as the session is happening, uh, it is helping a lot and uh, awesome feedback what I got. Thank you for each and every one of the speakers. Uh, I just want to take it two minutes. Um, I have, you know, I just, I know, I just woke up, frankly speaking, I don't know, even I did not uh, uh, brush my teeth or wash my face because this is the second, third call I'm attending uh, since morning as I woke up from bed. But Please excuse me if uh, my any uh, <laughs> exterior face or anything uh, it shows. I'm I came to India day before uh, on 18th early hours to India uh, at 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. I was at home. I slept a couple of hours. Why I'm saying this is sorry. I'll tell you. Uh, I just want to sh share few experiences what it means to be a Vasavite, what it means to be an NRIVA. The amazing journey, what I have had in last two days, I couldn't stop sharing with you all. Uh, that is one of the reasons I'm sharing. I joined this call also. I know you are all learning how to grow uh, and how to build the families. And, you know, uh, we always feel initially it was like uh, health and uh, um, uh, what is that committee name? Uh, exactly, Health and Fitness Committee. We have included happiness. That is the best metric one should have. Uh, life to be measured in happiness rather than by money or by anything. Uh, that is what the goal of any human being. And the most successful countries with the happiness index are the countries who, who are more successful also. Uh, Please may you know uh, be, give big round of kudos to all these teams and all these different topics. What you are going to see towards health, happiness, and fitness. You know, with that, you know, I came here and as I said, uh, I woke up at around uh, 
6 30 7 o'clock and by 9 o'clock i hit uh, the road uh, we are launching pustakamitra this is one of the initiatives we started uh, during this time and i I'm, i went to another tribal school in a mandal area it is in nalgonda district i mean so i went there and all the 300 plus or uh, 400 plus kids are waiting for us by noon uh, because it's a little bit of drive and once i go there the um, you know we launched library and everyone's happiness every teacher every student i have heard this personally from others but i experienced myself now as i launched this library the feeling of the giving and feeling of giving that wonderful wonderful books the collection of books what uh, means we are very fortunate at nrava the volunteers of whom we got there are three coordinates without naming them uh, i may not be uh, really i don't want to take that credit all by myself but i am very proud to find three gentlemen one is uh, ca prasad he is a state uh, curriculum uh, coordinator for the state and he works with the national cu curriculum also and he has a 40 years of experience in education the second one is manchi pustakam publisher uh, and uh, owner suresh kosaraj garu the third one is vignana prachuranudu the gentleman who came together they are helping us they have overall 100 plus years of experience in publishing and children's books all three of them are very eloquent, very highly dedicated individuals who wants to take this cause to the roots. That's how they started. You know, they came with a proposal to us, first to fifth grade, these are the set of books they identified. Those books come from 20 different publishings. And the same way, sixth to 10th grade, these are the set of books. That also comes from another 20, 20 different publishers. They procure on behalf of us those books. As and when I say that, okay, this is the school, I would like to, we would, NRIV, I would like to donate, then immediately they package all those books and with our Postakamitra logo stickers to that school. They need procurement time because of that. We always give 10 schools at a time. I know who you are joined from Pustakamitra committee here. Uh, kudos to them. Uh, they are helping me out. And they send these books. And once we go to the school, they launch. If we are not available, they will launch. But I had the privilege now. C.A. Prasad Garu joined with me uh, last means. He came a day before to Hyderabad. He came to my house. Uh, my uncle's house, uh, frankly speaking, and he is with me in this journey. Once we go there, we saw um, the happiness from all the teachers. They are all have so much prize on the content of the books, what has been identified. There are so many books which have been written by foreign others, has been translated into Telugu. Stran inspirational books. Uh, Sudha Murtigaru wrote one book that is uh, an amazing book. I myself learned so many facts from that book. Same way, the other Asimo, I don't know how many of you remember when you are a childhood, you have heard a uh, lot of why uh, earth is round or what is mean by laser. There are so many books he wrote that other. It has been translated into Telugu by Srinivas Chakravarti Garu, Dr. Srinivas Chakravarti Garu, kind of those kind of books. And uh, at the same time, there are some story books. That is another amazing thing. These story books, there is an author called Hari Kishan Garu. He put exactly how the kid says that story. I mean, the slang and everything replicates the true testament of that story. Now we have given that back to the students. The happiness of the students is in a quite an amazing feel. Yesterday, when I went to this girls' high school, girls' high school in one of the tribal girls' high school, I know uh, Praveen Garu will uh, put some photos 
uh, as we speak. If at all you can play those photos, my face is not important. That those photos are very uh, has an in depth meaning. These are the three hundred plus girls. They came from uh, tribal areas. I don't know how many of you know there is a language called Sugali. Uh, was spoken by all uh, Lombardi and Antanga da Tandal nincho star vilanta. Uh, rural where there is not even a bus service to them but these girls are joined in a mission to educate themselves to lead the future some of the girls i need to i i saluted them and i even we felicitated few girls taking their leadership roles and how they are leading their life it, it, that itself is a true testament of our work what we have been doing and there are all prize Uh, for all of us, uh, if you all don't mind, uh, one video I would like uh, Praveen Garu or Ashok Garu to play. Uh, there is a song that whole school, each and every kid in that school, they can sing that song without even looking at the script. It has very in-depth meaning of Women's History Month. Being a woman, being a girl, being a poor girl. whatever the feelings they have they put in that uh, so can i play now yeah please, please go please ahead, go ahead. Okay. i know we have a lot of questions pending but please play this yeah. one okay. so this, this is, is the one. Uh, just this to the... listen to this girl this girl uh, is an amazing i know it is a uh, two videos less than two minutes but i want you all to feel that ఆడియో రావట్లేదండి అశోక్ గారు అవునా ఒక్క నిమిషం లెట్ మీ సీ ఐ థింక్ ద స్పీకర్ ఐ టు చేంజ్ సెట్టింగ్ అశోక్ గారు జస్ట్ స్టాప్ చేస్తున్నారు కదా ఇప్పుడు మళ్ళీ షేర్ షేర్ కొట్టండి విండో వస్తుంది కదా అందులో బాటమ్ లెఫ్ట్ యు షుడ్ సీ ఏ share audio right right that is that one minute yes okay yeah um ade ashok garu play chese sariki ante ippati varaku na life lo inta miracle ayinatlu na kanipinchaledandi ee girls ni chusin tarvata i went there for an hour we spent there three and a half hour to four hours with them by the end of it anna why don't you stay some more time అని వినగలిగిన ఫస్ట్ డే ఇది సండే రోజున వాళ్ళ హాలిడే రోజున హండ్రెడ్ ఫిఫ్టీ ప్లస్ కిడ్స్ వచ్చేసి దే స్పెండ్ దేర్ వాల్యుబుల్ టైమ్ విత్ అస్ అండ్ ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ దేర్ ఆర్ బంచ్ ఆఫ్ అమేజింగ్ ఇన్స్పైర్డ్ కిడ్స్ అనదర్ స్టోరీ టు యాడ్ ఆన్ టు ఇట్ ఇస్ సంబడి కేమ్ టు మీట్ మీ విత్ హిస్ సన్ హిస్ సన్ ఈస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ప్రొడక్ట్ ఓనర్స్ ఆఫ్ మైక్రోసాఫ్ట్ హీ వర్క్స్ ఇన్ హైదరాబాద్ హీ ఈస్ ఫ్రమ్ ఐఐటి ఖరగ్పూర్ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ and when they came and i told them we are going uh, for an hour uh, ride and why don't we spend time as we go there because i i couldn't find the time before that then i said that well, can we spend as we are going and by the end of the journey that kid he, um, in his family they donated money to that school that is the inspiration what they got by looking at those girls he shared his experiences what it means to మార్క్స్ ముఖ్యమా లేకపోతే ఆ నాలెడ్జ్ ముఖ్యమా అన్న దాని గురించి హీ షేర్ హీస్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్సెస్ దట్ ఈస్ అనదర్ అమేజింగ్ థింగ్ లైక్ వైజ్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ద జర్నీ వీ హ్యావ్ టు టేకెన్ యాజ్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఎన్ఆర్ఐవిఎస్ పుస్తక మిత్ర వన్ థింగ్ ఐ కెన్ అష్యూర్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ అస్ ఇస్ ఇస్ ఎ థ్యాంక్ యూ టు ఆల్ ద డోనర్స్ ఫర్ ద బిగ్ సపోర్ట్ టు కమ్ ఫార్వర్డ్ అండ్ హెల్ప్ దిస్ initiative and um, it went to the true core roots and we are helping those tribals yeah. go ahead and Please. play and yeah. so can you hear now yeah ledu uh, huh? no no don't sorry. worry don't worry. don't worry if it is yeah. difficult because we have a lot of people uh, lined up for the questions yeah yeah, yeah. please go ahead uh, 
yeah i think uh, maybe we will forward this uh, couple of uh, snippets of the video uh, sure. and we will last call the chapter uh, chapters to share uh, to you with you all but just want to let you all know i couldn't stop myself how many uh, kids came and asking for even autographs i mean you know autograph or some people a lot of girls came and asking for blessings uh, is a quite a fulfilling journey the two days itself is a, a a lifetime memories uh, what they gave me and today i have another two schools uh, to launch uh, another uh, one tribal school i'm launching today means each day i'm here i'm launching some schools today two schools tomorrow two schools day after tomorrow there is something uh, i would like to request if you are all uh, going to your uh, hometowns and please let us know if at all we are launching any schools in that region even if it is not you i would like to request your families to join these launches i want them to experience what it means to be giving those books to those schools and how much it is going to play a big role a big role in that next generation's life our tagline read to lead for the nrav pustaka matra initiative nrav library initiative read to lead i am i believe now in it is going to transform these kids at least 20% of the kids if we can make that change that that is going to give us lifetime blessings from all these people thank you guys thank you each and every one of you and this is women's month we are celebrating women's month in each and every chapter i have seen yesterday uh, just this morning photos from chicago uh, all these wonderful ladies who joined they recognized women the same way several chapters were held and there are several chapters are going to uh, celebrate this women's month uh, all the hats off to all the women uh, without you or without you this earth may not have last this long also thank you all and thank you uh, thank you for the uh, once again for my leadership and the secretary team treasurer team and all of you uh, you know thank you speakers uh, putting a pause thank you ashok garu um giving me few minutes of time in the middle uh, everyone awesome job thank you krishna veni garu who is moderating also to here uh, everyone have a wonderful evening and a happy week ahead and please continue to watch more and more information on our initiatives and take them forward thank you all thank thank, thank, you, thank you president thank you, uh, thank you president ashok garu it's a wonderful session after adapt a student pustaka library education is the most important right annadanam mahadanam vidyadanam matah param annena kenika trupti yavar jeevacha vidyaya that means education is forever which is, you cannot be stolen yes. ashok garu yeah. yeah thank you yeah. sir can yeah. you please go ahead with the question and answers because yeah. a lot of people yeah. are waiting krishna veni garu yes. can start. yes yeah. actually almost done and uh, thank you for the um uh, wonderful uh, sharing information from india to and this uh, shrinivas garu and uh, yeah uh coming back to our questions um can we sh- can you share with us some regrow techniques for vegetables and fruits um uh, madhvi garu prashant garu any one of you uh how can you regrow like uh, uh ipudu harvest ayipothundi uh, any vegetable seeds nunchi vastayi so how can we regrow them like ok sar tho ayipothunda konni emo we can regrow right what are they and uh, how uh, is there, are there any t- tips or suggestions that you uh... yeah i can tell one thing and what we do is like for example if we take tomatoes uh, every at the end of the season what we do is we dry the we wash the tomato like one tomato like one ripe tomato we wash them and we dry the seeds and save it for the next year so that we can grow the same kind of tomatoes and next year without buying the seeds and one more thing what we can do like some plants like lettuce and bachelikura kind of those things uh, if you get it from the store or like from the previous crop you can cut it and uh, like the stems at the bottom you can just plant them so they regrow by themselves that also we can do other than that uh, i 
ఆల్ సెట్ అండి ప్రశాంత్ గారు డూ యూ హ్యావ్ ఎనిథింగ్ ఆర్ శోభ గారు ఇఫ్ నాట్ ఐ మూవ్ ఆన్ టు అనేది క్వశ్చన్ ఓకే ఓకే ఇండోర్ ప్లాంట్స్ లైక్ వన్స్ వీ ప్లాంట్ ఇన్ ద గార్డెన్ ఇఫ్ వీ ప్లాంట్ ఐ మీన్ హౌ కెన్ వీ టేక్ కేర్ ఇండోర్ లైక్ డ్యూరింగ్ వింటర్ సీజన్ can we save it move it uh, into a pot and uh, move it to the indoor and will they survive how how what is what is your suggestion uh, for me yeah sorry any one of you yeah. yeah for me personally there are some plants that uh, you know i put it out in the summer and bring it uh, in uh, for the uh, you know fall season and uh, you know uh, i don't put it out till uh, basically june even those uh, may sometimes they say can put it out around may 15th may 20th i don't really put it out till the sun is really really hot so more or less in june bring yeah. it in back in at the end by the end of september i do not transfer between pots and um, you know the ground if they're in a pot they remain in a pot outdoors and i bring the pot back indoors uh, mm-hmm. i don't uh, plant them and repot them i personally don't do that okay so okay uh, compost um, how do you make it like uh, during the winter or uh, summer like how do you make the compost in the new england area or in yeah because the squirrels and everything will will be there so composting in a uh, bin and is it suggestible um, yeah that was one question from the past yeah. ఫీ <laughs> basically okay. your kitchen produce right uh, they give you a separate bin you put it in that the company is also called black earth compost uh, oh. so they, they come around like how your town picks up uh, trash and recycle they also pick up compost you can check out google for black earth compost and they compost and the good thing is uh, your produce they give it back to you they give you few bags per year so they are yeah. doing the compost uh, we are not doing at home i personally don't have uh, experience composting at home okay and uh, someone asked any organic seeds uh, that you can suggest a company that uh, from from where they can buy uh, i usually buy from the seedsofindia.com only okay uh, there we can get like organic and also non gmo seeds heirloom seeds uh, i get it from there yeah okay yeah, nowadays they... walmart also start selling organic yes. seeds now i saw a couple of days back Yeah. yeah yeah i heard that and yeah that's true yeah but not every walmart that's right. what i noticed yeah no yeah. but and we can order online online i think walmart also oh, yeah so i requested one thing to ashok garu yeah uh, let's deal with some vendor yeah uh, and uh, have a bulk purchase and send it to the local chapters and let the chapter lead distribute to all the members who are interested or passionate to have their own garden that's what one request And the other request i was asking ashagar is uh, yeah. even the tower see if you could uh, negotiate a great deal or a discounted price like 30 40% from the market price and see if anybody is interested gather all the data and try to ship it directly to the individual houses under a discount price since uh, that will uh, motivate many people to come forward and cultivate yeah that's a good idea we can talk to them give some specific code or something they enter they give we can share with our yeah we can reach out to them excellent idea and the power of yeah that is the power bulk order yeah <laughs> yeah um uh, inko te yeah. chese uh, squirrels abhi ostai kada so how can they uh, protect the plants how can we protect plants um i wouldn't be worried about squirrels and the bunnies are the big concern bunnies yes uh, yeah. so um, better to put fencing um, you get those uh, green rods that you can mesh. Throw, mesh and put a mesh 
again uh, bunnies are very smart they can jump also so you need uh, i really wouldn't be worried about squirrels they don't eat that much uh, and you can't stop a squirrel if you go to youtube and type ninja squirrels you'll see so many videos there are kids who try to stop a squirrel and they fail so i wouldn't try to stop a squirrel but bunnies you can stop yes i heard a bird feeder birds also uh, keeping a bird feeder near to the garden helps out um the scarecrows or uh, by seeing them the small snails or anything the bugs uh, they protect the plant that's what i heard yeah and also there are some fans kind of thing uh, where the colorful butterflies kind of uh, impression that they give the bunnies will uh, run away by looking so, at the color so krishna venger we had to stop right already i think uh, we are done and yes are done yes, everything sir. Oh, yes. okay, okay. because it's already 11 o'clock late yes. for them some of them is yes. already i know it's like and thank you everyone for joining today's session thanks to our uh, nrava leadership team thanks everybody and thanks health and fitness committee our entire committee and thank you for all the speakers wonderful session giving idea regarding organic growth this thing and that helps a lot we are going to create a group soon then they will answer all the questions what you have so that like health and fitness committee group they will be gardening also is part of that we want to promote along in our way any questions will be answered there in the future yes thank you uh, ashok garu and uh, i request one other thing and mm. yeah try to create a whatsapp uh, yeah. it, it can go up to 1024 right so if it goes more than that maybe we can start a telegram and send in a request to people who are passionate to have their own garden and uh, who can share some of their vegetable fruits to the uh, and another another in our members so come up with a very creative ways and discounted pricing for all the possible material so, yeah sure. so that way it increases the value system okay thank you Actually, thank I you. would say thank you to the national team uh, and yeah. thank you to Ramesh Bapan Paligaru to encourage yeah. me into the joining into the national team as well as uh, a local chapter. Uh, being uh, working in the local chapter as a chair or a chapter lead is one kind of experience. National is one kind of, uh, you know, across the nation, right? So many different ideas, so many different thoughts. Uh, it's great pleasure to work with you all. Yeah. and thank you, you to the speakers yeah. i was uh, i was uh, when the moment i got the chance shrinivas pandar garu why don't we try i mean why don't we try and ashok garu is uh, on top of it and i am on top of our boston chapter members and uh, everybody chipped in it's, uh, it's it won't be possible without you all right yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Pravin Garu started good kick off time itself. That's why spring was coming. We wouldn't have much time. We had to quick yeah. start soon. Thank you for helping <laughs> everything, making the session and wonderful session and a good count. More than one sixty people joined. That's a great start. At least yes. we can. Yeah. No, no. Once we have, uh, once people start, you know, planting, seeding, then it is going to be much more wonderful session. We would like to have one session where. everybody can send the pictures of their right. lawn and we will present Bro. it on our video that's another next goal i want for this team entire garden to team. table and garden to table yep yeah. garden, garden to table, table. Yes. Yes. yes thank you thank you andy and uh, thank have a wonderful uh, evening and uh, good night good night thank you yeah, thank, thank you everyone thank you bye Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Andy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashok. Got a very nice session. Uh, oh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, and you join everything. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Good night. Yep. I didn't expect Prashant is a great gardener. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so very good tips for the really helpful it was. Yeah. And Ramesh is behind everything. Mother, we back support. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I didn't know Ramesh. Yeah, why? Because Ramesh, I know from the beginning, long time. I didn't know at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, he is very good in the gardening, Ramesh. Yeah. Right. No, He's no. We were easy. talking to him all since two, three years, right? I was a technology, but I didn't know you were. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he said that. I told that Ramesh Ashok Garu is leading this effort. He said, Yeah, yeah. I used to 